everybody. I'm Laurie, VP of Developer Relations at Llama Index, and I'm here today to walk you through our latest collaboration with NVIDIA. It is a blueprint for app development called the Document Research Agent for Blog Creation, and it's a multi-agent system to generate blog posts by doing independent research, and it uses NVIDIA NIM under the hood. What is NIM? NIM is a set of microservices that make it easy to deploy models across your laptop or your data center or the cloud. They are pre-built containers that support all kinds of AI models, including open source community models like MetaLlama 3.3 to NVIDIA's own foundation models, as well as custom models that you build yourself. Um, NIM microservices are deployed with a single command and use standard APIs, so you can get up and running in just a few lines of code. The idea is to make it easy to deploy AI models anywhere and at scale. So that is pretty cool. Let's dive into this notebook. The first thing you'll notice at the top is this Deploy Now button. NVIDIA Launchables links to deploy a notebook on a GPU with one click. The GPU required to run this is provided and the environment is pre-configured to run without any manual steps on your part. That makes it really easy to get started. But how does this multi-agent system for independent research actually work? Let's dive into the architecture. The first thing you'll see is that there's a data ingestion phase. We want to set up a knowledge base so that it has something to do research on. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a big body of research. In this case, we're going to take information about San Francisco's budget, uh, and we're going to run it through LlamaParse. LlamaParse is a service from Llama Index that parses complex document formats like PDFs, Word documents, spreadsheets, stuff like that, and turns it into a format that LLMs find easy to understand. That's going to make a big difference to how well a RAG pipeline can work because the quality of the data has a big difference, uh, makes a big difference to how well your application functions. After Llama Parse, we will take our data, our parsed data, uh, and embed it and store it in a vector database. Uh, and that is where we can do queries for our RAG pipeline to find relevant context for the LLM to answer questions about, as we're going to see. Um, once we're done with the data ingestion phase, we move to the query phase. In this case, the user is going to give a research request. And it's something that they want the system to write a blog post about. And that's going to run through a series of agents. The first agent is going to be the outline generation agent, which is going to take this request and say, what would a good blog post about this topic look like? Let me write an outline that, that shows at a high level what a good blog post on this topic would look like. And that sends it to the second agent, the question generation agent, which will take the outline and generate a series of simple questions that a, our RAG pipeline will be able to answer. Why do you want the questions to be simple? Because RAG is good at simple questions. It's good at answering simple, factual things that are answered in the source material. So we're going to make it easy for the RAG to work by not giving it multi-part questions, not giving it complex questions, just simple factual requests for data. Once it's got all of those questions and answers, um, it's going to send it to a retrieval agent, which is going to query the vector database that we built earlier uh, and get answers to all of those questions. Uh, once it has all of the questions and answers, it's going to run it through our content generation agent. This is going to take all of the context that it has. So it's going to take the original uh, research request, it's going to take the outline, and it's going to take the set of questions and answers, and it's going to try and write a blog post that satisfies that initial request. Once that's done, we will send it to the reviewing agent, and the reviewing agent will say whether or not the blog post is good enough. Does it actually satisfy the outline that we generated? If it's good enough, then it will output it to the user. If it's not good enough, it will send it back to the question generation phase and generate additional questions. In addition to the existing set of contexts that it gets, it will gather even more context to be able to fill in the gaps and answer a, an even more comprehensively. It will do that up to three times or until the review agent says that the blog post is fine. Let's look at how that's actually implemented in this notebook. Like any notebook, the first thing that we do is install our dependencies. You can see Llama Index. You can see the Llama Index integrations, NVIDIA's LLM integration, 
uh, the embeddings integration and Llama parse that I was mentioning earlier. Uh, we run wget to get um, our source data. In this case, it is a very long PDF, uh, uh, 300 plus pages of San Francisco's 2023 budget. Um, and then we start setting up our LLMs. Let's get our API keys from wherever we need them. We need one for NVIDIA to be able to access the NIMS and one for Llama Cloud to be able to access Llama Parse. Once we've got NVIDIA LLM going, we can run this quick smoke test just to make sure that it's working. We're going to be using uh, Llama 3.3 uh, 70B, which is a very capable open source model. And we're just giving it a very simple question and answer to make sure that it's working. And we can see that it is. Um, I mentioned that you can run NVIDIA NIM anywhere. So one of the options that this blueprint gives you is to run it locally. If you're running it locally, this is how you would do that. But in this case, we're running the hosted version. So instead, we're going to do it this way. We are setting up the settings.llm for all of Llama index here. If we wanted to, we could get clever and specify a different LLM with a different specialty for each of the agents that we're going to instantiate today. But in this case, we're just going to use Metal Llama 3.3 for everything. We're also setting up our embedding model, NV Embed QA E5. And now with those two set up, we are ready to do the ingestion phase. Um, like I said, you have to take our PDF and parse it using Llama Parse to convert it into a form that is easy to understand by LLMs. That's what's happening in this block here. Once we've got our parsed documents from Llama Parse, we turn it into a vector store index. Uh, which is what does the searching for us, and we persist it to disk. Uh, in a production situation, you would want a real vector store that is a separate service, but for the purposes of this notebook, we can get away with an in-memory vector store and just persisting it to disk. Because it's persisted to disk, if you rerun this notebook, then you'll hit this block here where it will just load it directly from disk. Um, now let's make sure that our RAG pipeline is working by with a little smoke test. We will smoke test. We will take our index and turn it into a query engine um, with a similarity top K of 10. What this means is when it runs a query, it will get uh, 10 pieces of context, 10 chunks of the document and use those as the context to try and answer the question. We will run a quick smoke test query through our uh, query engine what was San Francisco's budget for police in 2023, and we get an answer immediately, which is great. So once you've got your RAG pipeline, you need to turn it into a tool so that agents can use it. That is fundamental to how agents work, is that they can do tool use. In Llama Index is very easy. We just create a query engine tool, and we give it some metadata. We give it a name and a description. This is how an agent knows what a tool does. So agents could, our agents could have any number of tools, and those tools could do any number of things. How they decide when they're given a query about, say, San Francisco's police budget, how they decide that which tool to use is they use this metadata. They'd see that this tool has information about the 2023 San Francisco budget. So that's where it will, they know, the agents know they will find information about the police budget. So now let's actually build our agent. The first thing you're, we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a workflow. A workflow is an abstraction in Llama Index, which allows you to create multi-agentic systems very easily by defining a set of steps that comprise the workflow and a bunch of events, which act as the mechanism by which the steps are orchestrated and by which data passes from step to step. So you'll see us setting up a bunch of the events here first, and then we will define our, our document research agent as a class and we'll define our first step. Steps are defined by this decorator here. The way steps work is they will be triggered by a specific type of event that is that they declare themselves. In this case, the formulate plan step is saying that it is triggered by the start event. The start event is a special step, which happen, which is the first step that happens when a workflow is kicked off. We get some context out of our original request one is the query. So this is the request to write the blog post, what it's going to be about. 
And we sort, store that as the original query so that we can use it later and keep it in the context. Uh, we also get the set of tools. In this case, it's just going to be the one tool that we set up earlier. And we store that so that we can use the tools all over the place. Then we come up with a prompt. You are an expert at writing blog posts. This is what this prompt is about. It's about creating an outline for the blog post. We give it the query, we give it to the LLM, and then you'll see here something that we're going to do over and over, which is we're going to emit a progress event. This isn't a functional part of the workflow. This is just something that gets sent back to the user so that they can see what is happening inside of the workflow. Workflows can take a while to run, so it's useful to be able to send this information back to the user so they can see what's going on as it runs. The real meat of this step is returning this outline event. So after it's uh, created the outline, it generates an outline event containing the blog post outline. That triggers the next step because this emits an outline event. The step that gets triggered next is the step that accepts an outline event, which happens to be the next step in the code. But it doesn't have to be that way. The steps don't necessarily have to be in the code in the order that they, that they run. So we take our outline and we give it a new prompt. We say, you are an expert at formulating research questions. Like I mentioned, we're going to avoid complex or multi-part questions. We're asking it for a bunch of simple questions. We've asked it to output them on one line per question. And we've asked it to limit them to eight. That's just because it could generate any number of questions and we want this to run pretty fast. Then we get our response and we take our response and we split it by lines into one line per question. And then we emit a little progress event so that we can see which questions we formulated. And then we set into our context the number of questions that were generated. We're going to need to use this later, as you'll see. Um, we emit another little progress event saying what the questions are. And then we emit multiple events. So in our previous step, you'll, you'd have seen that we returned a single event. That's one way of emitting an event. In this one, we're going to explicitly emit events using the send event method, and we're going to emit question events. So instead of one event, we're going to emit eight events, one for each question. And these events uh, will be handled um, concurrently. So they will overlap with each other uh, in the most efficient way possible. Um, the answer question step is the one that gets triggered by question events. So this is the step that's going to get triggered eight times. Um, the first thing it does is check if the question is blank because LLMs don't like blank questions, but sometimes our other LLM will emit its list of questions with blank lines between them. If that happens, we just catch that and don't send it to the LLM. Um, if we get a good question, we create our function calling agent. We give it the tools. So in this case, just the one tool, the RAG query pipeline that we created earlier, and we ask it a question. We write an event to stream, another progress event, saying that it got a question and an answer, and then we emit an answer event. So now these eight separate steps are running, each uh, attempting to answer the question, uh, and emitting answer events. This takes us to the write report method, the write report step, uh, which is accepting answer events. And what it's doing here is uh, a sort of map reduce step, uh, specifically the reduce step using uh, collect events. What collect events does is it adds to the context any event it receives and it waits until it has received all of the events that we have told it to wait for. So in this case, we've said wait for the number of answer events as there are same number of answer events as there are questions. That's why we saved the number of questions earlier. So in this case, it's going to wait until it's received eight events. If it hasn't received eight events yet, it just returns none. So the Whole, the whole step will return none. So this step is going to run eight times each time an answer event is triggered, but it's only going to do anything useful the eighth time when it receives the final answer. Uh, so that's what's happening here. We store the questions that we've got so that we can use them later. And then we say, you are an expert at writing blog posts in our prompt. We give it 
the outline. We give it a set of questions and a set of answers. And then we tell it to write the blog post with a little progress event to let the user know what's going on. It does its best to write the blog post and then it generates a review event. The review event is where self-reflection happens. The uh, In the review report step is when we tell the LLM to look at the output of the LLM and tell us whether it was good. This step can run a maximum of three times, but we hope it won't need that. We give it the original query, we give it the blog post, and we say, does this blog post look good as an answer to that query? If it's good, then we tell it just to omit the string OK. If it does that, then we say, great, the blog post is fine, and we emit a stop event, which is another special event which ends the run of the workflow. If it's not, we set a new, we have told it that it should generate a maximum of four additional questions. So we again split those questions by line, set the number of questions, and generate uh, a bunch of question events. So this takes us back to the answer event step, um, the answer question step, and that will repeat uh, over and over until the reflection step says the blog post is fine. Um, what does this look like when we actually run it? Here you can see us instantiating our document research agent. We've given it 600 seconds to run. And we've given it the query, tell me about the budget of the San Francisco Police Department in 2023. So we're not asking it to summarize the whole document. We're asking it, given all of this stuff that you know about all of San Francisco's budget, write a blog post about this specific topic, research this specific topic, the police department's budget. Uh, what we're doing here is we're printing out all those progress events that we were emitting earlier so we can see what's happening as it goes. And then once we get the final results, we output a blog post. So let's just quickly step through uh, this output here, which is very verbose, but we can find a few important things going on. The first thing is that the formulate plan runs and it produces an outline event. And you can see the outline is some nice markdown saying this is what this blog post should look like. Next, you can see that it generates the questions. Here are the eight questions that we told it to generate, one per line. And you can see the step answer question getting run here. This is, like we said, this is going to happen eight times in a row as it attempts concurrently to answer all of those questions. And because these are running concurrently, the output here is all mixed up. You can see multiple questions happening. You can see it calling the tool that's calling the tool San Francisco budget. And this is the question that it's giving it and it's getting answers to those questions. There's lots and lots of question and answering. And occasionally you'll see a uh, step right report is getting called uh, and producing no event. This is what we said. It's waiting until it's received eight answers because it hasn't received eight answers yet. It hasn't yet uh, returned a result, uh, but eventually it will. After it's produced enough answers, uh, we'll just get to, aha, here it is. Step right report is writing a report. It gets the, it gets the prompt, which contains the outline. It contains the questions and answers. And it tries to write the report. Then it calls review report, which produces no event because it has instead formulated more questions. It has produced a bunch of, it has said, this blog post isn't good enough. Let's generate some more questions and answer some more questions. So the cycle repeats. It answers a bunch of questions. Write report gets called a bunch of times, but eventually you can see it has been given the prompt again, all of these questions and answers, and it has said the blog post is fine on the second attempt. And here is the blog post. If we scroll down, we'll see that I have rendered the output as markdown. And you can see it's a nice human readable report on the San Francisco Police Department's budget in 2023. Uh, and so I hope this has been a good introduction to uh, how this blueprint works, how a multi-agentic system with self-reflection can produce superior output, and how uh, doing a really good job with parsing uh, makes your uh, answers a lot better. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.